This video provides an overview of building 3D maps and localizing relative to them with Cartus Stencil. Stencil is a device for creating 3D models of outdoor or large indoor spaces. It has a range of 2 meters to 100 meters, and because of this range, it is not designed for confined spaces. It uses the 3D structure of the environment to aid in building the model and performs best in areas with 3D features as opposed to flat areas with few distinguishable 3D features. Please refer to Stencil's instructions for advanced options, tips for collecting better data, and troubleshooting. To power on Stencil, first plug in the USB LED indicator to a USB port on the back of Stencil. Then plug in an external 19 volt power source, such as the RAV power battery that may have been included with your order. Then press both of the buttons on the back of the device. The left button is a momentary button and powers on the computer and changes modes of operation. The right button is a latching button and should be pressed in all the way to power on the LiDAR. Both button indicators should come on. When the LED indicator turns steady blue, the computer is powered up and ready. To begin mapping, press the left button once. The LED indicator will turn solid green, indicating mapping is starting up. The indicator will then change to pulsing green after about 10 seconds to indicate mapping has started. You can then wobble the LiDAR to build a base map and start to move smoothly to build a map. In this example, I am walking through the space I would like to map. To improve performance and map quality in handheld scans, hold stencil out and above your shoulder to limit occlusion from your body. The map builds in real time as you walk, stitching together the data collected as you walk into one continuous map. Try to stay away from walls and in particular corners while collecting data. If you go through transitions like doorways or gates, move slowly without rotating to allow the sensor to see a significant portion of the area previously mapped as it begins to map the new area. When your scan is complete, press the left button once. The LED indicator will blink orange, indicating that the point cloud map you generated is being saved to disk. Once the light turns blue, saving is complete and Stencil is ready to do another scan. You can plug in an external monitor or touch screen and keyboard and mouse to view maps in real time or to view the completed maps after scanning or do things like change operational modes or parameters. You can move files off a of stencil with a USB drive to use them on your personal computer. Each scan saves two files, a point cloud or 3D model and a trajectory or the path that the sensor took through the model. These files can be found in the recordings folder on the desktop. To view these files on Stencil, you can open Cloud Compare, an open source point cloud tool that comes pre-installed on Stencil, and can be installed on your personal computer as well. Drag the two files into Cloud Compare to open them, and click Apply to accept Cloud Compare's default loading options. For a better view of the map you generated, turn on iDome Lighting. To highlight the path you walked, Go to Edit, Scalar Fields, Add Point Indices as Scalar Field, then change the point size from default to 3 or 4. Now you can see the path the sensor took colored by order, with blue being the start of the path and red being the end. The segmenting tool can be used to create a cross-section view to remove ceilings. The tool creates a new point cloud that has the segmented part removed. Uncheck the original point cloud to see the segmented one. In Cloud Compare, you can also save the point cloud in other formats such as LAS, which is required for importing to some CAD programs. The instructions have more detailed information on things you can do in Cloud Compare to view and repair errors in the point cloud. Now that you have a map, you can change modes to do localization and mapping relative to that prior map. This can be used to localize something like a robotic vehicle or add detail to an existing map. I will demonstrate using this feature to build onto an existing map. To switch modes, first execute the prepare map for localization command. This sets the map you just took as the map to localize from. See the instructions for more information on how to localize from a different map. Once that command is complete, execute the switch to localization mode command, which changes the function of the device from mapping with no prior map 
to localizing with a prior map. Before starting, ensure that stencil is at the same starting location and orientation as it was for the initial scan within a few centimeters and approximately 10 degrees. It may be helpful to mark the location or start in a clear identifiable location and orientation. Also see the instructions for information on how to initialize at locations other than the start of the prior map scan. To start localization, press the left button once, just like starting mapping. Again, the USB LED will turn solid green while initializing, then pulse green when ready. If you have a screen plugged in, you can verify that the localization found a good match by looking to see if the new data in white overlaps with the prior map colored by elevation. Then pick up the screen if you're using one, and stencil, and walk to view the area you would like to add to the map. Creating a model in multiple parts like this can allow you to stop and resume scanning in a large region, or build a quick base map before adding local details for improved performance. Also, if errors occur, you can stop the scan and just redo that part of the scan rather than the initial scans. Note that using an external screen is optional and can be used either in mapping mode or localization mode to view data as it is being generated. Once again, when your scan is complete, press the left button once to save the point cloud. The point cloud is again saved in the recordings folder. You can open it in Cloud Compare to see that the two point clouds are already registered together despite being in two separate files. Note that there are stray points in the model in the direction of the sun caused by sunlight being detected by the sensor. This is an inherent problem with LiDAR sensors. Those points can be removed in post-processing if desired. In Cloud Compare, you can merge multiple point clouds and save them as a single file if desired. This is done by selecting both point clouds, going to Edit, Merge. The merged point cloud can then be saved as a PLY or LAS file. You can once again use the cross-section tool to create segmented point clouds to show multiple floors within the model. Please refer to documentation on Cloud Compare to learn more about its features. And note that Stencil's point clouds can be edited in numerous programs, including CAD programs that you may already be familiar with. With the point cloud hidden, you can better see the trajectory that was taken during the two modeling runs, including seeing the starting location that is the same in both trajectories. Thank you for using Stencil. Please refer to the instructions for more detailed usage information, and please refer to our website for more information about Carta and our products.